Greetings! Hello, friends! Hello! Welcome to the Invisible Cabaret podcasty thing! Woohoo! <laughs> We are very glad that you are joining us, if indeed you are joining us. Obviously, we can't see, but we hope you are. No idea. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, If not, I mean, we'd be hanging out anyway, wouldn't we? So We would, yeah, that's very true. Uh, Nothing nothing lost. Uh, I am Rosie Verbose. And I'm Ferrero Rochelle. Lovely. Uh, (laughs) We have been thinking about doing this for a good while now, haven't we, Rosh? We have indeed. But uh, it's not seemed quite the right time, and then... The world has done what what has is um, happening now, yeah. and so we thought it's as good a time as any, possibly better time than any, to uh, get a bit more online community going. So that's what we are hoping to do with these videos, and then we're also trying to record them in audio format, so that once Roz, being me, has uh, done the £16 podcasting course that she signed up for, uh, she can edit something (laughs) together. Lovely. Good. Um, And we'd also, we are excited about it because we have lots of very interesting friends. Yeah, and uh, some wonderful, talented and beautiful uh, performers within our troupe who definitely have some things to say and are going through their own struggles right now as we all are and it's uh yeah I think it's a good time for us all to share and chat and not go stir crazy and uh, to make ourselves feel comfortable cozy with a touch of glam uh we have both enjoyed the excuse to put on a full face of makeup <laughs> oh my goodness and get into our silkiest robes self-care make it glam because for some people self-care is being glam so yeah a beat face with some jammers. <laughs> so this first one uh we thought we would just say hi uh introduce you to a little bit about invisible cabaret and what we have been doing and how we are transitioning our platform uh for the foreseeable uh and then just have a little bit of get to know us uh so that you aren't listening to strangers for very long mm-hmm. um, and then after that, we will be uh, interviewing and chatting with our troop members, our friends, um, people in the theatre industry, cabaret. Uh, so on that note, if you are looking for something to do of a Thursday uh, or, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever day, uh, we're free if you're free. Um, so email us, invisiblecabaret at gmail.com uh, if you think you would be an interesting person to talk to with regards to creative arts and mental health. Rosh, how are you dealing with mental health in this current time? Is my answer. <laughs> so I... Would say, I'm going to jump straight in. Um, I would say that I am someone who struggles with health anxiety in general. Um, we currently don't have a piece about health anxiety, although one is currently in the works because it is, uh, yeah, very, very um, appropriate. And also it's very, very real for me. Um, previously, my health anxiety has manifested as me googling things manically and uh being absolutely convinced that I've got something I normally feel a little bit better after I've seen the doctor Mm. um so once I've gone to a GP and I've you know said everything that I think is wrong once they check and say no absolutely you're absolutely fine then I start feeling much much better Mm. just uh, an addition my dad who is a uh uh He's trained uh, as a mental health nurse as well as a, a therapist. Big up. <laughs> he said that well, like, one of the most important things I could do to keep myself calm is to buy a body thermometer um, because you can panic yourself into thinking you've got a cough, you can panic yourself into thinking you've got a sore throat, you've got a headache, etc., etc. But you can't panic your inner body temperature above what it should be. So I did that. And because of that, I did that very early on. And because of that, I've been fine. My my health anxiety has been completely, uh, yeah, fine. Just really, I've felt really calm. I've, everything's been okay. 
I was I was really concerned about you at the beginning of all this. I thought a pandemic is the last thing Rosh needs. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> yeah. Anybody who knows me knows that like, I've got a mole on my face and whenever it's, you know, got a hair growing out of it or like there's a spot underneath it, I'm like, oh no, it's the end. And I know I'm making light of it and I'm like, oh yes, oh, where is me, et cetera, et cetera. But when it happens, it's so real. It's so gut-wrenching and exhausting and and terrifying really really frightening um so yeah thank you i've been really um impressed with myself quite proud of myself however hey. my fear has been for my friends and for my family and uh my dad uh mr thomas uh who is wonderful and not only as a therapist and a mental health nurse but is also one of my best friends in the world and yeah obviously he's also my dad you know like he's not I he brags about the fact that he uh, had a health MOT and his body was uh, considered to be that of a 37 year old disgusting I know ridiculous so <laughs> he is a very very healthy man but he has asthma mild asthma but he has asthma and I've not been able to get that out of my head and that's the thing that's been getting me uh, like apps panic attacks like you wouldn't believe like sobbing so hard that my face is screwed up and I have to call him every day I have to talk to him and I have to make sure he's okay and now he's starting to come because he, he had symptoms him and my mum uh have been in isolation uh for about eight days now and they've been through, yeah, through it all, they've had the fever, they've had the loss of taste, they've had it all. But my dad is starting to seem a little better. And my mum is kind of struggling to get over the fever bit. So now, because I know my dad's all right, now I'm completely panicking about my mum. And that's, that's where I'm at. <laughs> Bless you. Yeah, so uh, in short, health anxiety, not great. But for once in my life, it's not about my own health it's about the people I care about yeah which I think is a situation that so many of us find ourselves in my dad's a cancer survivor and I have been incredibly uh feeling incredibly protective about him it's it's oh, it's just shit isn't it it's just yeah. like ev that that was something my dad taught me very early on when dealing with trauma and dealing with um really tough times sometimes you just have to say yeah it's shit it's really shit that makes sense to me. Earlier on, I took my dog, Totty, for a walk, Queen Totty, and uh, she did a poop on a flower. And uh, I looked at that and I thought, yep, yeah, that's life. <laughs> it's the beauty and the shit all together. Oh, I love that that's what you thought. <laughs> <laughs> you weirdo. <laughs> Amazing. Shall we talk a little bit, Rosh, about Invisible Cabaret then um, and what we're planning to do with this next little bit? Do you want to start off and I'll chip in? Yeah, sure. So uh, for those of you who don't know, for uh, those of you who have not had the pleasure of coming to <laughs> one of our shows, um, we are a cabaret troupe that focuses on messages of mental health with the catchphrase of let's strip away stigma. Um my kind of favourite uh, phrase that Ros came up with is in our mission statement is uh, the idea that mental health is very taboo. Uh, and you know what else is taboo? Boobs. To boobs, if you will. Brilliant. Um, and so we've found over the two years that we've been going uh, that actually those two categories meld together really really nicely um because when you're up on stage bearing your soul uh you are very very vulnerable equally as when you are bearing your breasts bearing your body bearing everything that you do every time you get up on stage obviously we're not going to be putting on shows for a while um we were in the midst of doing some funding applications which have been called to a halt i imagine indefinitely um, and I say that in solidarity with every artist who has been working really hard on a project and hoping for the cash injection to get it off the ground um, or to get it further off the ground. 
Um, we are standing with you on that. And that, again, is disappointing. Uh, but obviously not the main issue right now with all that's going on. And sometimes I find myself feeling quite guilty for even having that thought when there are people trying to choose who to give a ventilator to. So it's all needing to stay in proportion, obviously. But as creatives, we want to keep doing our creative stuff, don't we? Yeah, especially because as we found, um, the creative outlets are just so important for maintaining good mental health. It is, you know, I, I think all of our troop members would would say the same. You know, there's something about getting up on your feet and choreographing a piece or writing or, you know, playing an instrument that just does so much uh, for chasing away those mental goblins. And in a time where we're all stuck in our houses and we're all scared and exhausted, we are turning to creativity and yet we can't do much with it. It's it's just such a paralysing experience I guess less so if you're used to writing but yeah blimey if you're a dancer or um, a burlesque artist or a cabaret artist or a circus I mean where are you going to get an aerial hoop at the moment you know what I mean Um, Mm, unless you have one already Um, in which case well done you that was good forethought Um, (laughs) yeah we're, we're all in a bit of a fix so the best thing we can do is try and use this time, I think, to uh, adapt our projects as best we can um, yeah. and get ready to hit the ground running when everything returns to normal. And I hope, 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 and I think I believe as well that um, once this all goes back to normal, people are going to want a party, they're going to want entertainment, they're going to want to be back in the theatres, in the cabaret places. Um, so that's... That's the hope and the goal. But in the meantime, um, whilst we can't and nothing can recreate the experience of being up on stage and sharing that moment with an audience, um, what we want to do is we've got quite a few videos already up on our YouTube channel and our Instagram TV. Um, We've got a few more in the bag as well, which we're looking forward to sharing with you guys. Um, But we also really, really want to embrace the fact that we are... um, online and so the usual barriers of location uh, and uh, time constraints and space restraints are not there now Um, so we would really love to lift up and use this um, uh, the, the small platform that we have to make more of a community of the artists that are trying to get their insides out, you know, and say something about mental health, either generally or telling their specific story. Um, We know that there are artists, um, definitely in the UK, uh, who are thinking about this and and trying to make that kind of stuff. Um, And we know that because when we've done open calls in the past, we've been so lucky to see the audition tapes come through and people even with, you know, rehearsal footage of something very very personal that um a lot of people would still relate to if you have anything like that even if it's on a hard drive somewhere in rehearsal footage we don't have to share all of it but we'd love to uh uplift as many performers and artists as we can who are making that sort of stuff um so please send us photos videos writing illustrations anything you got and we are going to uh hopefully use this time to create a kind of virtual gallery i guess yeah we're like we said we're all in this together and um yeah just anything you've got ping it our way and and we'll share it yeah and we'd also really like to make proper connections as well um with people and get talking with people all across the globe who are um feeling the strain and wanting to make something beautiful out of it using their craft um i'm excited i've got a few people that i know that we are going to be emailing to ask permission if we can um share some of their rehearsal footage um so that will be uh, a kind of the content warning not warning uh heads up for the next 
uh, newsletter, which we send out every month with a little bit of information about where we're at, um, which was more pressing when we were making stuff and uh, getting money. But anyway, in the meantime, it's going to be showcasing different mental healthy things um, from both the scientific and artistic perspective. So if you'd like to sign up for that, again, uh, just email us, invisiblecabaret at gmail.com. Or you can go to our Facebook and there's a link on there. Did you know that, Rosh? I don't think you knew that. I don't think oh, I do know that. sorted it last <laughs> week and I'm really proud of it because it took me a while to work it out. Um, it's also on our website as well. So if you head over to www.invisiblecabaret.org, you'll find it there. That was a lot of... In case, by this point, anyone had not realised, Roz is the person that's in charge of most of the social media. I don't know how (laughs) we would ever get anything done if it was down to me. Um, Because I'm a little bit of a technical grandma. Even this lovely setup, I've got a mic here in case you couldn't see. Uh, This lovely setup is purely uh, down to my other half, who uh, is a sound guy. And he is a sound guy. He is a sound guy. And also without him, I don't know if we'd ever get anything done. Probably not, no. (laughs) We'd still be doing shows for each other in our living rooms, I think. Yep. (laughs) They'd be excellent. They would. Just saying. Very well rehearsed. Ah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But not very amplified. So, yes, thank you to Matt. Before we stop... How about we just finish with what Invisible Cabaret means to you? Uh, Well, obviously a lot because uh, it is our brainchild. Um, The Invisible especially um, for me is important because I have lived with chronic pain for the last 10 years um, and I have at times felt invisible to my friends, my family, um, especially the medical care system, Um, My mental health has suffered severely because I have felt like a ghost, you know, just hanging around being like, hey, oh, you can't see me? Right. Um, That sucks. So uh, the invisible part of it, uh, ironic because we are literally shouting at people and um, shimmying nipple tassels to get people's (laughs) attention, um, means a great deal the community that we have amassed both physically and online is beautiful and I'm so it gives me life every day honestly um I'm grateful for it in a way that I uh think it would be hard to explain to somebody unless they had experienced the joy of sharing uh, a passion with someone you know it's yeah. both creative and spiritual for me. It's emotional. Uh, it takes all my yuck and puts it into something that might help somebody else. And that for me, and it's sparkly. And that's great too. All of that together. <laughs> and it's, um, it's a lovely mix. It's a lovely mix. That was beautiful. No, oh, cheers. That was uh, very emotional. Oh, oh. <laughs> It might be down to the wine. Don't (laughs) (laughs) Don't pick yourself up just yet. (laughs) You made my Michelle Visage laugh come out. What? You made my Michelle Visage laugh come out. (laughs) (laughs) Come on, you ask the question. Lovely. I have more of a Jimmy Carr laugh when I get really (laughs) when I get yeah. There it is. Like that, yeah. <laughs> Invisible Cabaret, what does it mean to you? Oh, uh, again, a whole stinking lot, so much. Um, Invisible Cabaret, forming this with you and with our wonderful, I can't stress it enough, most wonderful troop members and friends as well. They're just wonderful, wonderful people. Um, truly got me through the worst experience of my life. I um, lost someone to suicide um, two years ago, which was uh, a really, really, well, terrible time. Terrible, terrible time. Um, But 
having the troop and uh, having a, a goal to, to work on after um, we lost her when I really didn't have a sense of much else. There wasn't anything else positive in that situation um, and to be able to focus all of my energy, happy, sad, exhausted, whatever dregs of energy I had left, to be able to focus that all onto something, like you said, that is hopefully going to be able to um, change somebody else's life and get other people talking about their mental health and stop, you know, if, if what we do can stop one person um, from suffering in silence or, you know, from thinking that, you know, they want to take their own lives, you know, if what we do can change even one person's life, that is just everything to me. That would just be everything to me. And so I think we put a lot of ourselves into this and I know that our troop members do as well. They, you know, give 110%. And I like to think, I think this is true, that it means a lot to each and every one of them as well. Um, yeah, it's something that is very, very personal to all of us. And yeah, I think that's what Invisible Cabaret is to me. I think part of the reason that we're passionate about it is because we don't think it's necessarily been done in this format to this extent mm. before. Um, you know that lots of people are doing individual things, but a collective group of people all talking about it in that shared space um, creates a very special atmosphere. And it also uh, gives space for pathos as well. Like it gives a lot of space for laughter and joy. You know, it's something that is so dark and and horrendous in so yeah in so many ways and for so many people mm. actually creating a space where not only do we respect each other's mental health and we have a tap out system within our troop you know so if anything's getting too real and um, if anything's ever getting too heavy we can just you know tap out and say I'm, I'm gonna go take 10 and there's no judgment there's no um ramifications or anything you know it's everything is is built around mental health and so you know we really really respect that there's also so much joy and laughter and sexiness and silliness and you know it kind of is a little pod of life you know it's it, because that's what life is it isn't all doom and gloom and just as it isn't all joy and laughter um the flower and the shit the <laughs> thank you daddy for, <laughs> for, for providing that wonderful metaphor <laughs> lovely um, is there any more that we'd like to cover on this, our first outing into the world of podcasty things? Oof, um... Oh, oh, what are you grateful for this week? Let's, let's try and do that thing. Oh, that's a great idea, yeah. What am I grateful for this week? As, like many of us, of us self-employed performer people, um... I will have no money coming in, but I previously had a muggle job uh, that would have meant that I was going to be getting paid for the foreseeable, um, but I have now lost that. Um, but I am grateful for the fact that even though uh, this is now going to be a really, really scary time, my rent for my beautiful house that I live in with uh, my uh, partner and some friends um, is paid up for the next two months so that's not something I'm going to have to worry about I'm safe I'm in a warm home that's all I need right now yeah that alone is so much to be grateful for isn't it yeah, you're right massively what about you um I am grateful to be living with my parents at the moment means I don't have to worry about them um, being away from me. I'm grateful for my fluffy pets, which I'm grateful for every day, but especially at the moment when I'm spending so much time at home. Um, and I'm grateful for you and I'm grateful for oh. the cabaret and the fact that everybody is uh, embracing this virtual world um, that we can all <laughs> live in together for a bit. So that even though we're isolated, we're not isolated. Absolutely. Oh, oh, that's a nice note to end on. Yeah, I like that. I think so too. 
Um, thank you very much for joining us on this, yes. our first outing. <laughs> um, if you'd like more Invisible Cabaret, then, uh, oh, my Mac software is apparently in need of updating. Thank you for telling <laughs> Everyone. Computer. One thing I will add, actually, if at any point any of this has gone wrong or the internet has dropped or, you know, things have happened that aren't supposed to happen, please do bear in mind that everyone in the country is using the internet at the same time uh, and probably trying to video call each other at the same time. Yeah, probably starting podcasts, in fairness. I mean... Yes, probably. <laughs> so, <laughs> probably, yeah. More or less creatives wanting something to do. Uh, yes, if you'd like more Invisible, uh, then please do visit our website or um, come say hi on social media. Please do send us anything you would like us to um, share with full credit, obviously. Um, and any side hustles that you're doing, we want to uplift them and support them. So uh, send your stuff our way. Um, and let's try and be invisibly visible together. Yep. Too right. All the love. Mwah. Mwah. Bye, friends. <laughs> <laughs>